unmuted. Hello? Confirming Tobias, sir, are we good to go for the uh, chair to initiate the meeting? Madam Chair, we're good to go in initiating the meeting and for a reminder, we are uh, actively uh, live as we speak. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the post commission meeting. Um, I'd now like to call this meeting to order, but before we actually begin with the meeting, let's start off with a moment of silence, honoring the officers who lost their lives in the line of duty since the last meeting. And as of the last commission meeting, fortunately, no officers in California have lost their lives in the line of duty. So please join me in a moment of silence honoring officers who lost their lives since the last meeting. Thank you. Um, I'd now like to ask for a roll call of commission members. Barcelona. Please go ahead. Barcelona? Here. Braun? Here. Brazil? Here. Bui? Here. Donnellan? Here. Doyle? Here. Dudley? Here. Yule? Here. Long? Here. Marsh? O'Rourke? Here. Ramirez? Here. Thank you. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce post legal counsel, William Toby Darden and post executive director, Manny Alvarez. Are there any comments from um, Mr. Alvarez before we start? Uh, just to thank everybody for the last minute uh, since, uh, since the last meeting in September, we know this wasn't scheduled and we know everybody's busy. So thank you for, uh, for taking the time. That's thank it, you. Chair. Thank you, and thank you to your staff. Um, Mr. Darden, I'm going to ask you to be especially vigilant on interrupting me during this meeting because we are coming from so many different directions, and it's so important to all of us that this be done appropriately, and you're in the best position to let us know that it is. So thank you in advance. Anytime, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, now public comment. This is the time set aside for members of the public to comment on items on the commission agenda. Pursuant to commission policy, the commission chair will manage the public comment period in deference to the commission's workload and meeting time constraints. Up to 15 minutes is allotted at the beginning of each commission meeting for public comments on items on the agenda. Based on recent events, more people than usual may want to address the commission. Therefore, if required, we will go longer than the 15 minutes, but may limit this period to no more than one hour as we have a significant topic to address. Members of the public who wish to speak are asked to limit their remarks to no more than five minutes each. If we have many persons who wish to speak on the same topic, I, as the chair, may intervene and will ask that you limit remarks to no more than one minute. Pursuant to existing commission policy, the chair may conclude the public comment period if multiple speakers are voicing repetitive or similar statements and the 15 minute public comment period has expired. Please be advised that the commission cannot take action on items not on the agenda. Please remember that this meeting is being transcribed. So I may politely interrupt and ask you to repeat or speak slowly and clearly so your comment can be correctly captured in the transcript. If there is anyone watching 
who would like to address the commission during public comment, please call in to the number shown on the screen at this time. We will take the calls on a first come, first served basis. If other persons are in the queue waiting to speak, you will be placed on hold until it is your turn to address the commission. You will know when it is your turn to speak when you hear that you are unmuted. Once again, you will know it's your turn to speak when you hear unmuted. We will wait for approximately one minute to allow for individuals to call in. When it is your turn, if you wish, please state your name and organization. Please note there could be up to a minute delay due to public comment calling in. If needed, the number is 646-749-3122, access code 605-488-405. Okay, so now we'll take those calls as they come in. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Commissioners. This is Wayne Quint. I am the Executive Director of the Los Angeles County Professional Peace Officers Association, calling on behalf of the singular issue today, which is uh, the June 2nd, 2021 decision by this commission uh, <laughs> to allow the modification of regulation 1005. Uh, I'm also calling, uh, we are a member of the CCLEA, that acronym is the California Coalition of Law Enforcement Associations which probably represents over 150,000 peace officers and represents more than 40 rank and file law enforcement associations. Uh, please be advised that uh, the CCLEA is opposed. Uh, the CCLEA either has associations that directly represent district attorney investigators as their certified bargaining units or associations whose law enforcement members work with district attorney investigators when investigative prosecution of suspects occurs during the judicial process. Neither the district attorney investigators nor law enforcement association members want to see the lowering of minimum training qualifications change for the district attorney investigator. It is quite concerning to the CCLA and unacceptable that the post commission move forward on altering the qualifications for the DAIs without seeking input from rank and file law enforcement associations. Uh, the CCLEA, as well as the Los Angeles County Professional Peace Officer Association, respectfully request that at today's commission meeting, you follow recommendation number two and rescind the actions taken by the commission at the June 2nd, 2021 meeting related to the modification of regulation 1005 and maintain the existing language of the regulation as is. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Thank you, Wayne. Next. Good afternoon, Chair Dudley and Post Commissioners. My name is Robert Moss. I'm a Lieutenant with the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office, Bureau of Investigation. I'm also an executive board member of the Los Angeles County P Professional Peace Officers Association. I'm addressing agenda item A. As you are aware, the investigators at our, our Bureau of Investigation are certified by post as general law enforcement officers as defined by California Penal Code Section 830.1A. Our sworn staff are called upon to perform a variety of law enforcement related duties, including search warrant service, emergency vehicle operation, traffic stops, tactical entries, consensual contacts, and reporting to calls for service during mutual aid operations. Just last year during the pandemic, pandemic, our investigators, supervisors, and managers were requested to assist local law enforcement agencies during the George Floyd civil unrest throughout Los Angeles County. The fully sworn members of our bureau worked tirelessly with our allied law enforcement agencies that include the Sheriff's Department and over 40 police agencies. During my 22 years at the Bureau of Investigation, I have worked as an investigator, sergeant, lieutenant, 
And I can tell you respectfully, but without reservation, that I know of no present district attorney investigators throughout the state that supports the post commission on June 2nd, 2021, decision to move forward through the rulemaking process to amend the regulations that would allow a district, district attorney investigator applicant that has not completed the regular basic course to be eligible for hiring. I think it is safe to state that since the June 2nd decision, there has been a groundswell of opposition that includes formal written opposition on June 21st from the California District Attorney Investigators Association, written of opposition on June 30th from the California District Attorneys Association, which I believe the Honorable Chair is a member of, and written opposition on July 16th from 46 California District Attorney Chiefs Investigators and Inspectors. I would urge the commission to withdraw this regulation for now, as it appears there is almost universal opposition for the stakeholders who will, def who will directly impact by this amendment. I believe POST should set up a workshop of knowledgeable law enforcement investigators, district attorney investigative chiefs, and district attorneys to study this proposal, then report back to the POST commission with its findings. Please adopt recommendation number two that is contained in agenda item report. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Next. Hi, this is Paul Bartlett with the Association of Orange County Deputy Sheriffs. I'm a retired commander from the Orange County District Attorney's Office and uh, now the Executive Director for the last nine years with the Association of Orange County Deputy Sheriffs. We represent approximately 3,000 active law enforcement officers, including 1,500 retired officers. Uh, we represent both the 830.1 and the 830.35 DA investigators. Uh, we have put on record through our letters and through our objections through our attorney uh, why we believe this should not be moving forward. Uh, we recommend that take an option number two and not moving this any further. Our, our district attorney in Orange County objects to this strongly. Our bureau chief objects to it strongly. Nearly all others in the field have expressed throughout their numerous letters and comments, how they do not support this change and how harmful it is to, to change the standard for which we currently have. Um, this is, uh, I won't go into the details because we've submitted it so many times in the record, but uh, we strongly object to moving forward with this and so does the majority of the membership in our field. So thank you and please consider uh, selecting number two. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barker. Next. Good afternoon. My name is John Irk and I am the Chief Investigator for the Yolo County District Attorney's Office. I will be brief. I'm calling in today on behalf of the office to voice opposition for Regulation 1005A. I am one of the 46 chiefs that signed uh, the opposition letter and was unable to make public comment previously. I thank you all for your time and consideration into this matter. Thank you, Chief. Next. Hi, good afternoon, Madam Chair and Commissioners. My name is Nuno Tavares. I am with the Placer County DA's office and work here as a lieutenant. I am also um, on the California District Attorney Investigators Association Board. Um, I also oppose the uh, decision made on June 2nd and strongly urge the commission to reconsider uh, option two on the agenda. Uh, as a lieutenant at the DA's office, part of my job, daily job is to assign investigations that are often violent crimes, crimes against persons, and we rely on experienced and trained investigators to do uh, those kind of jobs. We owe it to our victims. We owe it to the agencies that we support to bring to them the most highly trained and experienced investigator we can to do these cases. So again, recommend that you folks take uh, uh, adopt option two. And thank you so much for your time. You guys have an awesome day. Thank you, Lieutenant. Next. Hello. <clears throat> yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brad Ehrman, and I'm the president of the Association for Special Agents with the California Department of Justice. And um, I'm on the supporting this measure. 
we have some very, very well-trained um, agents at DOJ that do a variety of different tasks from wiretapping to transnational gangs, firearms investigations, and major uh, fraud investigations. Um, there's a, a lot of our um, agents that also have the specialized post and in and they're unable to go to these DA's offices. We spoke with some DA's offices that would love to hire some of our agents that are retiring to come over to DA's offices, but if they have the specialized, they're unable to do that. Um, you know, agents with us have 25 years of experience doing major investigations, and because of that, they're unable to, because of the specialized posts, unable to go over to a DA's investigation. We're also an 830.1 not um, not one of the lower ones, and our training is as high, if not higher, than a lot of the DA's offices. So uh, we would like to support this measure to change the uh, standard. Thank you, Agent. Next, uh, hello, Commissioners. My name is Fred Easton. I represent the LA County Professional Peace Officers Association, the associations of Orange County Deputy Sheriffs and the Riverside Sheriffs Association. Um, we filed a uh, brief that I will not repeat here, um, but the reason I am logging on now is uh, because this is the only opportunity I have to speak to the entire commission. I really urge you to uh, read that brief we put a lot of time into uh, analyzing this uh, proposed amendment or this amendment to the regulation in the light of the requirements of the Administrative Procedure Act and found it under uh, Section 11349.1 of that act to be lacking in the uh, meeting the standards of necessity, uh, clarity, and consistency were the main ones. Uh, basically, uh, the brief says it all, and uh, I know you're all busy with uh, probably a mountain of materials you have to read, but I think uh, with the little headings we put in this brief, you can skip to it, and uh, we, we try to be as, concisely, as concise and uh, authoritative in terms of citing uh, uh, pertinent authorities as uh, we could be. So uh, for those reasons, we uh, urge you to adopt option two and uh, table this amendment and uh, keep the uh, regulation as it is. Thank you, sir. Next. That's good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yes. We okay, my, I'm sorry, I have a bad connection. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you okay and your connection is just fine. Thank you. Great, well, excellent. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and Commissioners. My name is Brent Westwood and I'm a commander with the Riverside County District Attorney's Office, also president of the California District Attorney Investigators Association. Uh, I know we've shared many letters and touched on some key points, so not to rehash on the same information, but at this time, I would like to respectfully request the commission adopt option two on the agenda item report to rescind the actions taken by the commission at the June 2nd, 2021 meeting related to the modification of regulation 1005 and maintain the existing language of the reg regulation as is. Thank you. Thank you, Commander Westwood. Next. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can, please proceed. Good afternoon, Madam Chairperson, Executive Director Alvarez, and those esteemed members of the commission present today. My name is Brian Sullivan, S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N, and I had the privilege of speaking during the public comment session on September 20th. My position during the previous meeting was as the representative of a large group of federal law enforcement entities who are strongly interested in pursuing careers and opportunities in local and state law enforcement, including but not limited to the position of district attorney investigator. As a graduate of a federal law enforcement academy and having served more than 19 years in this capacity, 
California Post does not recognize our training to satisfy the requirements of a regular basic certificate waiver. However, does grant us the ability to seek and obtain a special investigator basic certification, or more commonly known as an SIBC. The reasoning behind this, to my understanding, is the federal academies are perceived more as investigative in nature, as opposed to a more street enforcement environment. I would like to convey to the commission that this approach and perception of the federal academies cannot be more inaccurate. I've spent the majority of my 19 years working alongside my state and local partners, conducting criminal investigations with local impact to international implications. These investigations have included homicides, child abductions, public corruption, narcotics, and white collar, just to name a few. As I listened to the collective opposition state their reasoning for not wanting the proposed change to 1005, I continually found myself focusing on their main concern. We do not want to lower the standards. The opposition did identify two penal code changes regarding appointment and span of authority in the state of California, both of which can be amended and corrected by the commission. However, the centric point of lowering the standard was the only common thread shared in their comment. And on behalf of those who hold an SIBC, I too found this comment to be in poor taste. As I stated during my previous public comment, I represent a group of individuals who are running toward a profession so many are running from. In short, we are simply seeking the opportunity to appear before these agencies and demonstrate our skills and professionalism and the benefits we can bring to their agency. In the end, it is their decision to hire us or not. I'm simply asking not to be written off before we had the chance to display our ability simply because of the post certification I hold. I thank you very much for your time and I appreciate you today. Thank you, Agent Sullivan. Next. My name is Moses Reyes, R-E-Y-E-S. I'm the Chief Investigator for the DA's Office in Santa Clara County. Um, Madam Chair, Director Alvarez and the Commission, thank you for this opportunity. I just wanted to correct the record. As of yesterday, there are 48 of 51 Chief Investigators in the state of California that stand opposed and have signed on to that said letter. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Next. My name is Mary Green. I'm the Chief Investigator of Pasco County District Attorney's Office. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to address the commission and uh, Madam Chair. Um, on behalf of our office, I would just like to express our opposition to this proposed amendment. Uh, we would like additional time as stakeholders in this and as people who care uh, very deeply about the status of our profession. We would like the ability to be able to have some input and some discussion about this proposed change. Additionally, one of our biggest concerns is serving our community and transparency. DA's offices, as it currently stands, recruit from the communities that they serve to uh, recruit officers who have the opportunity to serve domestic violence victims, sexual assault victims, child abuse victims, and work hand in hand with those victims that represent our community. This change uh, limits the ability to do that, and we would like to have a part in that discussion. Thank you very much for your time. Holler, can we, you please state your name again? I think we lost her. Okay. It was Mary Green from the Placer County DA's office. Thank you. Thank you, Investigator Green. Next. Muted, unmuted. Is there someone there? If you've been told that you've been unmuted, please speak up. Okay, let's take the next call.
There's three on the line, but nobody's answering. Okay, thank you. I'm going to give those three on the line just another minute. Um, if any of you would like to speak, we certainly are interested in hearing what you have to say. Hi, this is Paul Barter from AOCDS. I got cut off and called back in, but I've already spoken. Thank you. Okay, hearing no other public comment, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to address the commission. We all recognize how valuable your time is and we will consider all of your input. Um, now let's go to item A. Item A is a report on the public hearing held on September 20th, 2021, pertaining to the modification of minimum basic training requirements for district attorney investigators. At this time, I will call upon Assistant Executive Director Maria Sandoval and Bureau Chief Jim Krokow, Basic Training Bureau, to provide us a report on this item. Um, Ms. Sandoval? Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Commissioners. The public hearing was held on September 20th, 2021 at Post Headquarters and was also available online. The hearing was regarding the proposed changes to the minimum training requirements for the District Attorney Investigators Post Regulation 1005. The Commission voted to allow graduates of the Specialized Investigators Basic Course, or the SIBC, to qualify for investigator positions within a District Attorney's office. Letters received by post were included in the packets for commissioners at the last commission meeting. Public comments at the public hearing echoed those letters and outlined four main concerns. Number one, lack of notice and collaboration of DA investigators. During the public comment portion of the commission meeting on Thursday, October 22nd, 2020, a caller requested that the commission entertain the possibility of SIBC graduates qualifying for investigator positions at district attorney offices. This topic was not on the agenda for that meeting, nor any prior commission meeting. Due to this public comment during that meeting, the commission directed post staff to present the feasibility of such changes to regulation 1005 at the commission meeting on February 24th, 2021. On the following Monday, October 26th, 2020, Post Executive Director Alvarez contacted the District Attorney Investigators Association or CDAIA president. During the call, Executive Director Alvarez discussed with the CDAIA president the issue raised during public comment and the direction of the commission regarding the same. Executive Director Alvarez sought feedback from and discussion with the association and offered to meet with the CDAIA board to secure recommendations and input. At the commission meeting on February 24th, 2021, post staff made a presentation regarding the alternative methods of addressing the qualification for DA investigators. The commission compelled staff to make a second presentation with more in-depth analysis with recommendations for consideration at the commission meeting on June 2nd, 2021. On the evening of June 1st, the night before the commission meeting scheduled on June 2nd, Executive Director Alvarez received a phone call from the CDAIA president expressing that his association opposed any changes to the existing regulation. There was no contact with or input provided by the CDAIA until June 1st. Second concern, changes to regulation 1005 will potentially remove DA investigators from the PC 830.1A classification. Post has no authority to remove or move groups from any section of the penal code, nor has POST proposed such a change. If this were to happen, it would have to be done by the California legislature and not by the commission. The commission, however, does have the ability to determine the type of basic training that is required for district attorney investigators. Specifically, penal code section 13510 provides as follows. The commission, the commission also shall adopt and may from time to time amend rules establishing minimum standards for training of city police officers, peace officer members of county sheriff offices, marshals or deputy marshals, peace officer members of a county coroner's office, notwithstanding section 13526, reserve officers, police officers of a district authorized by statute to maintain a public police department, peace officer members of a police department operated by joint powers of agency established by article one, 
of Chapter 5 of Division 7 of Title I of the Government Code, regularly employed and paid inspectors and investigators of a district attorney's office as defined in Section 830.1 who conduct criminal investigations, peace officer members of a district, safety police officers and park rangers of the County of Los Angeles as defined in Sections A and B of Section 831.31 and Housing Authority Police Departments. District attorney investigators are classified under 830.1A, which is considered general law enforcement. This classification of individuals is required to complete a field training program of all DA offices have requested exemption from. Law enforcement assignments, which are defined in commission regulations, are duties which include investigation of crime, patrol of a geographical area, responding to the full range of requests for police services, and performing enforcement actions on the full range of law violations. Third concern, the lowering of standards. Currently, the regular basic academy has a set minimum requirement of 664 hours, while the SIBC, the Specialized Basic Investigators course, is 591. Training requirements included in the RBC and not included in the SIBC are as follows. Vehicle operation, 28 hours. Patrol techniques, 12 hours. Vehicle pullovers, 12 hours. Crowd control, eight hours. Traffic collision, 12 hours. Custody, two hours. Lifetime fitness, 40 hours. ABC laws, two hours. Missing person, four hours. People with disability, four hours for a total of 145 hours. Additional topics in the SIBC not included in the RBC are as follows. Surveillance, 16 hours. Administrative procedures, 16 hours. Case management, 32 hours. Computer and computer crimes, 16 hours for a total of 80 hours. The sole presenter of the SIBC, which is Golden West College, currently runs between 683 and 705 hours, which is an additional 91 hours of instruction within a variety of learning domains. Number four, the importance of experience. A great number of chiefs from the district attorney offices submitted letters saying the crucial, the critical importance of the DAIs having experience as a police officer, deputy sheriff or detective and the hiring of individuals who have completed the SIBC with none of those experiences will significantly hurt the profession and or compromise cases. Those sentiments were echoed by many chief DAIs and attorneys representing the associations during public comment at the public hearing on September 20th, 2021, and also today. On September 21st, 2021, Post conducted an analysis of the currently serving 830.1 DAIs for the state of California. The data within Post EDI reflected 22 current DAIs who graduated from the RBC who were appointed as DAIs with no previous experience as a full-time police officer, deputy sheriff, or the like. Those 22 DAIs are currently serving at large and small DA offices in the county. They are Butte, Fresno, Kern, Madera, Merced, Monterey, Riverside, Sacramento, San Benito, San Francisco, San Joaquin, Santa Clara, Santa Cruz, and Tulare. Of the 22 currently serving DAIs mentioned above, one has served in the role of chief DAI and also another one as an assistant chief DAI. Additionally, four separate 830.1 DAIs have come from out of state after going through the post RBC waiver process who have no experience as California police officer, deputy sheriff, or otherwise in the following counties, Butte, Calaveras, Orange, and San Diego. As we have previously mentioned, POST does not set guidelines or rules related to experience. Experience, desired qualification, and other important factors subsequent to basic training are rightfully at the discretion of the individual hiring authorities, not POST. Nonetheless, it is important to emphasize that DAIs have been, have in fact been appointed as recently as 2021 who are currently serving without the experiences which have been articulated by those in opposition. Based upon the learning domain information I presented moments ago, it would appear that a new hire with no prior peace officer field or investigative experience would have more applicable training through the SIBC as opposed to the RBC. Just to conclude, 
this amendment to regulation 1005 would not be a mandate to any DA's office to hire an SIBC graduate. Rather, it would give a DA's office the option to hire someone with a very specific skill set should they desire to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Sandoval. Now, if I could see, I'd now like to hear from the other the commissioners. If I could see by a physical raise of your hand, it might be easier for me. I don't see any hands up yet. Uh, uh, yes, Commissioner Barcelona. Well, the, the issue that I hear a lot of people calling it, I understand that they want high, uh, a high bar for the profession and having been in the profession a while myself, I, I understand that. However, this doesn't require any DA to hire a person if we go with option one. They can if they want, but they certainly can have their own standards. That's my understanding of it. And the fact that we have, uh, I think one of the callers said that we have more people running away from the profession now than coming in. I think that's true. We're having an extremely difficult time finding qualified people. And uh, I've worked with a lot of uh, people in the state and uh, uh, folks in the FBI on various task forces and things that have been uh, extremely good investigators. And I don't understand how someone would think that somebody with 20, 25 years of experience with those agencies wouldn't be a good DA investigator. Um, and I know that all the, uh, the, the uh, DAs send their people to continuing training and or if they thought someone needed additional training, they would uh, uh, send them to those classes. So I think having options is a good thing rather than uh, closing the door. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Barcelona. Who would like to speak next? Commissioner Brazil, please. Yeah, um, first, I want to thank everybody that spoke today in the public hearing and, and wrote their briefs. Um, I watched it all, read them all, and, and appreciate the input. Um, I, have a, I have a question of um, Maria. In number two, um, describing the concerns, you mentioned waivers, that DAs were requesting waivers. It was towards the end of that number two comment. Could you explain that a little bit? Yes. For general law enforcement, it is regulation requirement that they must pass a field train officer program. Um, unfortunately, DA offices primarily don't do that. So they have to request and write an exemption from that particular regulation. So they do not require a field training program. And I wouldn't say that all of them, I have Jim Grockow sitting at the table, I believe also, um, we checked on all the DA offices and they have requested e exemptions from that particular regulation. Uh, thank you. And, and then um, I was gonna kind of summarize what I'd, I'd heard in the meeting uh, and the public hearing, but Maria, you did that, so I won't go back over that. Um, I, I do think there's one uh, valid point here um, that, that we need to seriously consider as, as the commission is we did outreach to the association. They didn't return the calls uh, in a timely manner. I understand that. Um, but I do think we need to go back and look at our processes for identifying stakeholders and making sure that we include people in the process. Um, I would also encourage us to look at uh, potentially pushing out the um, uh, date that this takes effect to give Apple time to go back and reach out to everyone and have those conversations to identify potential issues that we may or may not have missed and or educate people. Uh, I do agree with uh, Commissioner Barcelona. There's a lot of skilled investigators out there that have done a lot of great work that unfortunately we're artificially eliminating the potential for them uh, to get into the business. And I think we need to, to take down some of those barriers uh, and let the DAs have options if they choose. They can choose not to, that's that's totally fine. That's, that's up to them. Um, but I do think there's some opportunity to go back um, since we as a, as a commission have been pushing staff to be more collaborative, to involve more stakeholders, um, to go back and, and see if we can't, um, not only unwind the clock, but push the start date of this out to maybe July. That gives us uh, three commission meetings actually between now and then to have more conversation about it. Just food for thought. Thank you, Commissioner Brazil. 
I, I would really I like to hear from each of you, if possible. Yes, Commissioner Donovan. Donovan is officially asked. Commissioner Donovan, please go ahead. Commissioner, thank Blue, you, Madam Blue, Chair. You're next. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, I'm not jumping ahead again of my colleague. Uh, thank you for everyone who's called in and spoken on this. And um, one item that has come up and consistently is the feasibility of the SIBC prospectively. I, 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 I got to tell you, I, I've got some significant doubts about why we even keep this SIBC up and running, given the fact that, you know, the prism seems to be that there's two types of California peace officer. And regardless, um, I, I would like the commission to direct staff to go and look at the feasibility of prospectively ending SIBC as a product that's provided by uh, the post commission. And then off, that would ultimately mean that uh, the entrance into the profession is through an RBC. And it means everyone's on the same playing field. It's a much more long-term strategic thought, but the issue with this SIBC that keeps coming up and um, I just doubt its feasibility moving forward, especially in a profession that is um, in need of, of, of folks to bring them in. Let's bring everyone in at the same level. Thank you, Commissioner Donnellan. Is that all? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Bowie. Uh, and then after you. that, I think Commissioner Ramirez is next. Thank you, Madam Chair. I did hear from a couple of the speakers, um, they brought up the a second option um, that was brought forth to the commission just for clarity and so that we're all on the same page. Could somebody please uh, bring up those options one more time for, for all of us? Yes, Ms. Sandoval. Uh, I think that I don't have that with me. I'm off site, so I think, uh, Katie Strickland may have that, be able to read the options. I have it if no one else does. I have the options ready. Okay. Thank you, please go ahead. Okay. Option number one, take no further action and allow the modification to regulation 1005 as approved by the commission on June 2nd, 2021 to continue the rulemaking process through the office of administrative law Two, rescind the actions taken by the commission at the June 2nd, 2021 related to the modifications of regulation 1005 and maintain the existing language of the regulation as is three, Modify the regulatory language approved by the commission on June 2nd, 2021 in any way the commission sees fit and or for take any other course of action the commission believes to be appropriate under the circumstances. Thank you, Commissioner Bowie. That was what I needed, thank you very much. Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just think that in listening to all the uh, people that spoke today, you know, we obviously have a lot of good on both sides and a lot of viewpoints. Uh, my one concern is I think we did kind of fail the stakeholders in this, the DAs. Um, it seems like they didn't get our message of what we were actually doing and everybody seems to be so passionate about it. I don't see a need for us to rush to a decision, but uh, kind of circling back to what Commissioner Brazil said, Let's uh, let everybody have an opportunity to come to the table and see if we can fix it where everybody's happy with it. And maybe we um, voted a little too quickly on it without uh, actually hearing everybody's voice. Thank you, Commissioner Ramirez. Commissioner Braun, thank you. Thank you, Chair Dudley. I'd like to ask Assistant Director Sandoval a question about the uh, DA investigators that were hired from outside the state and assuming that's a post waiver process similar to what law enforcement or other, all other law enforcement does if we're hiring someone from out of state a post waiver process, is that correct? I think I heard you. Um, you're asking me if the individuals that came from out of state went through the, the um, basic waiver process, is that correct? Yes. Yes, they all went through the basic waiver process. We have no idea. Um, 
the extent of law enforcement experience that they did have coming from out of state. Thank you. So uh, I did listen to the post hearing and I listened to all the comments today. There were some very valid points. There were some very uncomfortable positions that were brought up in the hearing that were almost demeaning to the uh, applicants that, that would be considered under this change. And I found that unfortunate. And I don't, I hope that wasn't intentional. I did not hear that today. Uh, a lowering of standards, a lesser quality employee. I don't like hearing that law enforcement. It, it made me uh, disappointed. I do understand where they're coming from, but again, this is not a mandate. If somebody wants to hire uh, a DOJ investigator, I've worked with some fabulous DOJ investigators that have taught me a lot. I think that's valuable, and I think that's an opportunity that we should offer. I do understand that they, the stakeholders didn't feel they were given the opportunity, and maybe we should give them a little bit more time. I, I don't recommend, I don't like recommendation number two just to undo this change, which is to bring an opportunity to hire more people into a DA investigative position. Thank you, Commissioner Braun. Who would like to speak next? Commissioner Long? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd simply like to thank, thank uh, Maria for what I thought was an extremely cogent, incisive, and to me persuasive summary of the concerns. I, it, aside from you know uh, change, which is always flummoxing to a lot of people, there was sufficient lack of there was sufficient notice. There's no talk of changing the penal code. Standards don't appear to be low, you know, lessened what, whatsoever. I thought Maria's uh, discussion of the uh, SIBC qualifications over the RBC was quite persuasive. So I just want to note that I'm uh, notwithstanding concerns of the opposition, I'm fine with the our, uh, our action. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Who would like to speak next? Okay, fair warning, I'm gonna put you all on hold. Uh, yes, Commissioner Doyle, thank you. I mean, in the interest of time, I don't have an original thought. However, what's convincing to me is that it's not required uh, of a DA's office to hire somebody with FIBC. And I, I, I really wanna comment, I, I agree with Commissioner Donnan. I like the idea of having a single track to achieve that rather than Two different tracks. So, and, and I agree with Commissioner Long. I think there was sufficient notice for 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 public comment. Thank you, Commissioner Doyle. Commissioner O'Rourke. Yeah, I uh, I kind of agree with uh, Commissioner Brazil um, on this that maybe we uh, extend the date and maybe nothing changes out of that, but at least have the the stakeholders have their. Uh, uh, their voices heard and, and uh, see if anything comes of that. I, I also agree. Um, uh, Commissioner Donlin brings up a good point. If we're all on the same track, then there's not that differentiate from everybody. So. Thank you, Commissioner O'Rourke. Commissioner Yule? I'm sorry, I, I have no comment on it, um, just based on the lack of background. I think all of the commissioners have spoken. Okay. Um, I'd like to, I've listened, I've read, I've considered, um, but I've also been a prosecutor for over 30 years and the elected district attorney for over 10 years. As such, I have to say that I resent the assertion that this change lowers the standards. I have worked with countless agents from a variety of state and federal agencies, and to suggest that considering any of them for a DA investigator is somehow lowering our standards, I believe is blatantly absurd and absolutely insulting. This change does not lower the standards. What it does is it increases elected district attorneys ability to bring law and justice to their communities by bringing in others who might best meet the needs of their offices and their communities. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who has called in, everyone who's taken the time to read the voluminous 
letters and motions. This is such an important point and all of you are deeply appreciated by the commission. Is there anyone else that would like to comment? Is there a motion? So to be clear, yes, Commissioner Brazil. No, Commissioner Barcelona. I'll make the motion that we adopt uh, number one. Is there a second? Royal second. Comments? Questions? Uh, Madam uh, Chair, Barry Donlan. Yes. Uh, my, my comments still stand. I would ask, we ask uh, the executive director to come back to the commission with a report on the impacts of the prospective elimination of the uh, SIBC and um, kind of marrying the comments that I, uh, I suggested. I don't want that to be missed in this. Thank you, Mr. Donilon. We'll only be able to take one motion at a time. So right now there's a motion to um, go ahead with recommendation number one, and there's a second. We can certainly take up other motions when this motion either is complete or not. I Thank you, Madam Chair. I will absolutely um, call on you again, Mr. Donald, to make any subsequent motions you'd like to make. So we're on option one. There's been a motion and there has been a second. Any questions or comments? Okay, now it's time for a roll call. Ms. Nunez, would you please do a roll call vote? Uh, Commissioner Ramirez had her hand up. I don't know if you- Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Ramirez, please. Uh, just out of uh, not knowing sure what the process is. Um, so if I don't agree, do I just vote no on this motion or do um, and see, take it from there? If you disagree, you should vote no. Okay. You, another option is that you can abstain, but certainly okay. no vote means you disagree with this motion. Okay, thank you. Mr. Darden, you want to comment on that or did I express that? No, you got that exactly right. The options are abstain, aye or nay, yes or no. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Ms. Nunez, please go ahead. Barcelona? Yes. Ron? Yes. Brazil? Yes. Louis? Yes. Donalyn? Yes. Doyle? Yes. Dudley? Yes. Yule? Yes. Long? Yes. Marsh? O'Rourke? Yes. Ramirez? Abstain. Thank you. It appears the motion is passed. Any other comments or questions as to the first motion? Now, Mr. Donilon, you have a motion to make. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm aligned with this, but it's separate, is uh, ask staff to come back at a subsequent commission hearing to outline in a report the impacts of the prospective elimination of the SIBC course and uh, how that would impact California law enforcement and where will that leave us as far as entry into the vocation? And I, I would appreciate a second. Brazil second. Thank you. Before, we, oh, thank you. And I heard Commissioner Barcelona made a second. Um, I have a question of Executive Director Alvarez. Um, um, let's see, Investigator, uh, Executive Director Alvarez, do you have any questions for Commissioner Donlin as to what he's asking for? I do not. I believe he is asking for um, information on the impacts of the elimination of the SIBC to be presented at a future meeting, if I understood that correctly. Commissioner Donlin, is that correct? Uh, yeah. And I would also say that, you know, that report potentially could be an action item for this commission to make a decision on whether we continue to hold the SIBC course. Just to be clear, I think... Uh, uh, Executive Director Alvarez sees that, but I just want to be clear. 
Do you have any Understood. questions about that, Executive Director no. Alvarez? No, Madam Chair. Understood. Okay. Um, it, Commissioner Barcelona has a comment or question. Commissioner? Yeah, I just want to, I, I agree with Barry. I, I'm probably the one guy in here who in my association has about every penal code in it, one, uh, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.37, 0.38. 0 and it has caused tremendous amounts of uh, problems uh, you know, with people, especially when you start moving these investigators into um, uh, task forces where different uh, types of folks carry different kinds of weapons. And you could literally have a, a have a gunfight or something, and everyone, you know, people are shot, and a and a full lot of weapon slides across the floor, and a point three officer has that's the only gun he has to defend himself, and as soon as he picks it up, uh, he's a he's a felon, uh, and so this is something that we've had to deal with a lot, and I think that uh, having one police academy post certified, all peace officers go through it cleans that up. I know that that's a huge legislative issue and there's also other implications for uh, you know, the types of uh, benefits people get, but it really needs to be fixed and it's, it's caused a huge problem for a long, long time. And I'm certainly in support of it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Barcelona. And I believe you second Commissioner Donlin's um, motion. Any other questions it, or yeah, comments? I'm, I'm sorry, it was, it was Rick Brazil, I think. It, it was, yes. Yeah. Oh, am I giving Commissioner Donilon credit yeah. for something Commissioner Brazil did? <laughs> no, Brazil, Brazil second, Donald. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions about Commissioner Donilon's motion? Okay, Ms. Nunez, please take a roll. Thank you. Barcelona? Yes. Ron? Yes. Brazil? Yes. Bowie? Yes. Donilon? Yes. Doyle? Yes. Dudley? Yes, please. Yule? Yes. Long? Yes. Mark? Yes. O'Rourke? Yes. Ramirez? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And that motion also passes. <clears throat> Is there anything else from any commissioner? We're about to end the meeting. Okay, let me tell you about the upcoming commission meetings when they will be held December 8th through 9th, 2021 at the Post Headquarters in West Sacramento, March 2nd through 3rd, 2022 in San Diego, May 25th through 26th, 2022 at Post Headquarters in West Sacramento. Again, commissioners, is there anything else? Hearing nothing, I will call for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there such a motion? Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Yes. I just, I just wanna make sure we're on firm ground and understanding what you all have directed. So if I understand correctly, the first motion was to allow the process to continue through the Office of Administrative Law as was decided on June 2nd. And then the second was to bring back a report on the elimination of the SIBC. Is that my, is my understanding correct? I'm sorry, I'm not in the room with everybody else to ask them. So I just wanna make sure we get that first part and the second part right. Does anybody disagree with um, Executive Director Alvarez's assertion about what is next and what they're being asked to do? Manny, just for information, the, uh, the vote was on option number one Option number one was to take no further action and allow the modification to regulation 1005 as approved by the commission on June 2nd, 2021 to continue the rulemaking process through the Office of Administrative Law. And that, that passed. Thank you. Any quit? thank you. Um, Mr. Darden, now is there anybody who had any comments, further comments about Director Alvarez's second understanding? Anybody disagree with what it is that he understood to be? Okay, seeing no hands, hearing no comments, I'll call for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there such Doyle. a motion? Doyle. Yes, Doyle, please. Oh, that's, that's your motion. Thank yeah, you. That's my motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, who is that? 
a second Commissioner Doyle Donnelly. Okay, thank you very much, both commissioners. Any questions, comments? Can we take a roll call on that last motion, Ms. Nunez? Thank you. Barcelona? Yes. Braun? Yes. Brazil? Yes. Bowie? Yes. Donnellan? Yes. Doyle? Yes. Dudley? Yes. Yes. Yule? Yes. Long? Yes. Marsh? O'Rourke? That motion passed. O'Rourke? <clears throat> yes. Ramirez? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That motion passes. And again, I want to thank all the callers, everyone who voiced their opinion on this. I want to thank the commissioners for all of the extra work that you um, did in preparing for this hearing, in listening to the special meetings, in commissioning meetings. Um, this was not an easy decision for anybody, but it was a very thoughtful one, and I believe due process was held. Thank you so much. Be safe. Bye-bye.